I came up with another way to try to measure panel resonances in speaker cabinets. You know, that's uh, always a big topic among speaker builders anyway, how much the panels resonate and how stiff they need to be and how much attention you should be putting into that. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be solid numbers out there. So this is my um, attempt to try to you know, do a little bit of that. Now, in the last video on this topic, I measured the ELAC speaker, which is a little bookshelf speaker. In that video, I had a comment that said, that pointed out, well, it's a bookshelf speaker. It's fairly solidly made. I mean, pretty well made. So you're not really gonna have big resonances there. What about trying something that's a bit bigger and maybe poor, more poorly built? So I figured since I had this out here, which is uh, bigger, definitely, and definitely uh, kind of poorly built, that I would do that. So I've got one of, like, I've, I've got the other box and I'll hold it up here so you can see it. The inside, this is, um, made from three eighths inch plywood, three eighths of an inch thick. For those of you that understand metric only, that's um, 10 millimeters. And there's very little bracing in here. I've got a shelf brace up here on the top and another one that goes across here that also braces the magnet of the speaker. And there's a box in there separate for the uh, mid-range. So it's probably, I mean, all things considered, maybe the worst case example, unless you really go out of your way to try to build something totally crappy. I also came up with another way to measure the offset between my two measurement instruments the um, measurement microphone and the accelerometer. That was one of the things, one of the big problems I had in that first video, uh, trying to find that offset. Like there's no real correlation between the two. But when I measured this to measure the tweeter, I noticed something. Inside this speaker, there's a transformer. And my measurement mic was picking up that vibration. So that gave me the idea that I could either use that transformer that's in there, or I could set up that panel exciter and inject a steady um, sine wave signal, a tone, that would you know, stay the same for all the measurements. And that would, be the, that would give me the offset. So you can see the panel exciter right here on the side of the speaker, right next to it is the accelerometer. Now, the first measurement that I did was with the microphone. I set the microphone very close to the front of the speaker. You don't want it too far away, otherwise that'll be another offset that you'll have to try to deal with. But I figured if I could get it maybe within 10 inches, then that would give me pretty good, reliable reading. So I ran the first sweep with the measurement microphone and that panel exciter is not turned on. And you can see the response here. Now I need to switch over to the waterfall plot and that will show the resonances. It'll also show this tone when it's played. You won't be able to see it in the frequency response, but it will show up here. And if you're at all familiar with this, you can look at that and see that this is not a particularly quiet box. There are a lot of resonances, especially down low. I did a lot of messing around before this to try to figure out where that tone should be, where it would be the most noticeable. And I picked 100 Hertz. And the tone is being generated by my function generator and sent directly to that panel exciter. And then I ran the sweep and you can easily see that 100 Hertz tone. It's that straight peak that goes right up to the front. So with those two measurements, I could switch from the measurement microphone to the accelerometer, nothing uh, changed as far as the tone that's being generated by the function generator. The only difference between the microphone and the accelerometer is that I have to crank up the um, input on the accelerometer 
uh, quite a lot to get a, a reading that's not going to be give me errors. And so what you're looking at right now is the panel vibration without that tone injected in. And you can see that there's nothing significant at 100 hertz. Then I turned the function generator on again to turn on that signal and ran the sweep again. And you can definitely see it here. It's not as obvious as it was with the measurement microphone. But you, what you can also see is the transformer vibrating inside the box that's, you know, powering those amplifiers. It's actually reading louder than that tone. To give you an idea of what that sounds like, recording with my camera microphone, which is in pretty close, it's like the minimum focus distance, I think it is maybe 15, 16 inches away from that panel exciter, and you can listen here. And then I moved it in so it's like two inches away from that panel exciter, and that's what you're hearing now. So that gave me the data that I need to go further. And the first thing we'll look at is the frequency response of all four measurements. And the first one is the microphone without the tone. The second one is the microphone with the tone. The third one is the accelerometer without the tone. And the fourth one is the accelerometer with the tone. And you can see here that you really can't see a difference in the frequency response between these two. You can't see any difference whatsoever at 100 hertz. Now I'm going to switch to the waterfall plot to the one that was measured with the microphone that had the tone. And you can see the tone here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that down to the floor. And then I'm going to lift the top up so that I can calculate how much higher the peak of the sound that's coming from the speaker is than that tone that the microphone also picked up. It helps if you're familiar with how this program works, but I'm not changing the signal in any way. I'm just raising the floor and I'm stretching the top up. So that gave me 54 decibels to the top of the peak of the tone and 101 decibels to the peak of the sound output from the speaker. And if we do some simple math, we say that 101 minus 54 equals 47 decibels. The output from the speaker is 47 decibels louder than the tone that's being created by that uh, panel exciter. So now I can do the same thing again with the accelerometer reading, push that down until that peak reaches the floor, and then raise it up until those peaks go up to the top as well. And those peaks are from the sound that the speaker was making as it was vibrating the panel. Those are actually vibrations. That's how much the panel was vibrating. So the same math again, 93 minus 65 equals 28. The vibrations that the panel are giving off are 28 decibels louder than the tone that's being created by that panel exciter. So to figure out the offset between the accelerometer and the microphone, what I need to do is take that 47 and subtract 28, which is the second result, and it gives me 19. That's 19 decibels between the microphone and the accelerometer. That's 19 decibels between the microphone and the accelerometer. Of course, the offset that I measured here is really only relevant for this situation you'd have to set up the test again for a different speaker and you'd probably get a different offset. I don't know how much different it would be. I would you know, tend to think that a stiffer panel would be less excitable and therefore the offset may be quite a bit greater, but I'd really have to test another box, maybe get the ELAC out again and redo that with this method and see what I come up with to get a clear answer on that.